What's going on guys? Welcome to another video brought to you by the Minecrafters. I'm Captain Jack and in this tutorial we are going to be showing you how to automate the inscribers from Applied Energistics 2. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the most basic simple setup and then we're going to work up to a pretty complex setup. Um, one thing I do want to note um, is that if you have not watched our Applied Energistics tutorial series, you should probably go ahead and do that. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, your questions will be answered in that series. So basically the inscriber works um, where you put in a press and then you put in whatever it requires and then it squishes up. I have some acceleration cards in here and you get some printed silicon. So basically doing it manually is the base, like the absolute simplest way that you can do this. But we don't want to do that. We want to automate it. All right. So this is basically a two-step process. The first step is taking raw material and turning it into a printed cir circuit. And the uh, second part is taking the printed circuit and turning it into the actual processor. So you're going to need um, the four different types of presses. You're going to need each of the raw materials that correspond with them. Um, the raw materials can go in on the sides of the inscriber, and then you can pull out of any side. And those are going to give you all the printed circuits. All right, so the second step in the process is a little bit more complicated, but you need to know this when you're automating it. So basically, we're going to take our three different types of printed circuits. So we have the logic, calculation, and engineering. And those need to go into the top of the inscriber. It's really important when you're going to automate these. On the underside or the downside of the uh, inscriber, you're going to want to put the printed silicon. So that's going in the bottom. These are going in the top. And then a piece of redstone on any of the sides will give you the final printed or the final processor of each of the three different types. So in this example, I basically had that all laid out, and this is just using hoppers and chests with the, you know, a few little item ducts here. Um, you can see that my engineering circuit, my logic circuit, my calculation circuit are going in the top, the redstone's going in the bottom, the printed silicon, or the redstone's going in the side, and the printed silicone's going in the bottom, and the final product is being pulled out of a side. So that's the basic general principle that we're gonna use going forward here. All right, so before we get too deep into this, I really want to reiterate um, the fact that there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm just showing you the way that I usually do it. If you have a better way, that's great. Throw it in the comments, but please don't tell me that I forgot a way. I just can't include all the ways to do this. All right, so this is the same setup. I'm just using um, Ender IO conduits. Um, the thermal expansion item ducts work just fine. Um, but what I have going here is that I have a bunch of redstone in here, and the idea is that I'm going to be able to put my ingredients in this chest, and the ingredients are going to go into each of the respective inscribers, and it's going to do the whole process for me. So let's say I take a piece of gold and a piece of silicon. Those are going to go in and press up. That's going to press. This is going to press. Give me my printed silicon. Those are going to go in there, and it's going to give me a logic processor. So how did this happen? So on the first item duct here, I have this to insert and extract always active on extract to what I'm extracting is all the raw materials so your silicon diamond gold and uh, the pure certus and those are being flipped into the correct inscribers so the inscribers are also whitelisted so only silicon can go in here only gold can go in here and so on and so forth and then I have them being pulled out I actually don't need these I have them being pulled out um, by the same item condu conduit and extract always active and that's going to get sucked right back into here as the plain printed circuit now, in order to make the processor, I need another item conduit, and this item conduit is extracting all of the printed pieces plus a piece of redstone, and they're being filtered into the correct places. So the printed silicon is being exported out of the chest, and go it goes into the bottom. The redstone goes into here, and the printed um, three types of circuits go into the top. And once the final product is done, I have this one set to in and out mode, so I have this to extract, always active, and this is going to pull out only my final products and bring it back into this chest. So if I throw all these in here, in theory, it's going to squish them all up. It's going to make everything that I need. It's going to squish them in here. And all my raw materials are going to get filtered to the correct place. And you see I have processors coming in now. Awesome. All right, so here you can see I have basically the same setup, except this one's uh, horizontal instead of vertical. It works the same way. Um, just note that when you're doing this, you're going to need twice as much silicon because each one of these needs its own silicon. So if you put in um, one of each of those, you're going to need six. So these are all going to get pulled out. They're all going to get squished. And then the final product is going to be made over here. And you can see I have this one rotated a little bit um, so that I can properly um, or that I can fit it in less space. I could have done it the other way, which is fine. Um, so yeah, you can set this up however you want. It doesn't have to be in a straight line, and you'll see that in a minute. All right, so we've automated it with hoppers, and we've automated it with Ender IO conduits and piping like that. Now let's see how you automate this with Applied Energistics 2. So basically what I have here, I have a bunch of different interfaces, and the interfaces are attached to the inscribers. All of the interfaces have patterns. 
this is going to make one printed silicon with one silicon. So when I go to in here and when I go to craft, it's going to take one piece of silicon and then throw it in here and then it's going to print it up. Now, how do I make the final version of these things? In order to make this work inside of your pattern terminal, you're going to have to create a recipe just like this and you want to recreate it for the other two as well. Um, put a piece of redstone, a piece of printed silicon, and whatever type of circuit that you want, and have the outcome be whatever processor that you want. Go ahead and program that in, and then on the back side of this, I have basically that same um, system where I have a chest. So the way that these work is I can't slap an ME interface directly onto the inscriber to put everything in, in the right spots because it's just not that smart for whatever reason. So I have to have it go through a buffer chest first. And you can see I have my patterns in here, and this will be the exact same pattern. So when it goes to make this, it's going to put the three different components in here, and then it's going to be um, exported out using some type of piping or conduit, and those are going to go in the correct spots. Again, the correct spots are printed silicon in the bottom, the three types of printed circuits in the top, redstone in the side, and then the final product gets pulled out on the sides, and that's going to create whatever I want. So if I go and craft a... Um, actually, let me change this craft a logic circuit it's going to go in there it's going to get pressed it's going to go in the back here all the ingredients are going to get put in the chest then they're going to get put in this inscriber and bam i've automated the inscribers with applied energistics too all right so if you're interested in saving space i've actually managed to put this entire setup inside of a three by three block and this thing works perfectly so if i want to craft a logic processor let's say i'll craft two of them um this is a little bit hard to see because everything is so smashed into here, but the final product is going to come out on this inscriber right here, and you can see that happening. And basically, I have a whole self-contained <laughs> um, processor unit right in here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you how I did this, but basically, you got to use the same concepts that I just um, showed you and then uh, squish it all into an extremely tiny space. So I got it. it's got its own controller, it's got its own drive and storage. I have power here going, um, so this is, you know, you just use a power cell. Um, it doesn't have to be a creative one, obviously. Here's my final processing chest. I have the same concept. I have um, an interface slapped onto here, so to make the final product, this is going to get pulled into here. It's going to get pulled out, put in all the correct places, and then it's going to come back out in. For this setup, I did need an extra interface, so it, you know it's a little bit more resource intensive. I guess it doesn't even matter at this point, uh, but you can fit this inside an extremely small space. And if you're curious how I have the uh, interface is set up, the front one here, or the inscribers, excuse me, set up. I have the front one here is making the final pro product and you can, you know, rewind the video and look how I have the conduit set there. And then all these four here are making the printed um, silicon logic and uh, engineering processors. So yeah, you can fit this inside a really small space. Also, before we go on, I did forget to mention that the interface on the top of these is basically used um, to pull in the finished products. So that's why that's there. All right. So how do we make this faster? Um, because it's sharing a lot of silicon. Um, you're going to need a ton of processors to uh, make some of the real end game tech, especially if you have extra cells installed on your mod pack. So I'm going to show you two ways to speed this up and they're going to be really helpful. So for this system, I actually have, you see 12 here, 12 here, and 12 here. I have 12 of each type of processor. What you can do is you can set up a level emitter system that basically keeps you stocked with a uh, certain amount of processors all the time. So when it comes time for you to go and craft something, you don't actually have to wait for all the processors to go through the processes of being pressed. So what I have here is whenever I dip below um, 10 of any of these processors, I have level emitters set up and you can see it's making it there. I have level emitters set up so that it's going to automatically keep me in stock on 10 of these at a time. And the system is set up right back here. So you can see it's trying to make all this stuff. Basically, I have a level emitter aimed at an export bus. You're going to need a crafting card and a redstone card in here. So this is active with redstone signal, and it's exporting logic processors. And the level emitter is activating the redstone signal on the export bus. So emit when levels are below 10 on logic processors. And because I have a crafting card in here, it's going to automatically craft logic processors until I've reached 10 again. And so that's a one way to make this a little bit faster and to always keep processors in your system. All right, so this is the most resource intensive um, setup here, but it's the, it's the fastest. And actually it could be a little bit faster, probably a lot faster, um, if I had a level emitter system hooked up to this, like the one that I just showed you. But basically what's going on here is that each individual processor has its own setup. So when I go to make uh, a logic processor, I've got my 
logic press here I've got it it's got its own silicon press here and then the final product is going to come out right here so if I need different types of the circuits at the same time it's going to be able to make them all simultaneously and you can see this happening right here it's putting all my resources in here it's pressing them up it's making the final product if I needed an engineering um, circuit at the same time then I would be able to make it you know up, up there or a calculation one over there and really quickly I'm going to show you how I set this up. So I'm using the same ME interface into a chest way. And it's crafting one logic presser press with one silicon, one gold, and one redstone. So what happens here? Well, the items get pulled out. So the silicon goes into the silicon press right here. So that gets put into the middle. The gold goes into this press. Once they both, once they both get turned into circuits, both circuits come over here and the redstone is already in there waiting for it and bam you have a processor so this again along with the level emitter system if you want to make sure you have tons and tons and tons of uh, silicone presses ready to go that's going to make this system just a little bit faster all right that's going to be it for this video i'm just going to leave it on this screen so you guys can take a look at the way these are set up the diagram on the right is to make the printed circuits and the diagram on the left is to make um, the actual processors. I know sometimes it's difficult to figure out which side of the inscriber you need to put crap into. Hopefully this makes it easier for you guys. Um, hope you liked the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did. Like, comment, subscribe, and stay poised for more videos.